In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a retro style adventure logo using Kittle, which is our online web editor that you can use for free by signing up using the link in the description. Now, if you're a true retro fan and longing for more, we actually did a retro t-shirt tutorial a couple weeks back. You can click right here to check that out, so keep that in mind. And before we get started with the tutorial, do me a quick favor and hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss any of the upcoming tutorials tutorials that we have here on the channel. All right, the first thing we're going to do is look at a mood board that we put together of retro designs. And so you can see we have some more muted style color palettes, but they all are very nicely in tune with each other. We have these kind of striped colors uh, that are very prominent throughout retro styles like this, these rainbow colors that are either in the same kind of uh, same kind of tone, but then we also have these contrasting colors like these darker colors here uh, that go with the lighter colors, which is a also a prominent feature in retro design. And so we just wanted to look at a couple of these to draw some inspiration for the logo that we're going to make. Uh, and so it is always helpful to put together a little mood board, a little flashboard of something that can help you in your design process. So let's go ahead and click new project. I'm just going to leave it at the default setting, which is 1200 by 1200 pixels here because uh, you can always change it later if you need to. But I'm going to turn on the grid here and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and then start creating the layout for our adventure retro style design. So let me add this rectangle here and I'm going to line it up. I'm going to keep three of these little boxes on either side. I don't want to keep it. I want to keep it even like that. Uh, and then we're going to create a size that feels right to us. And then we're going to add a border to this. Uh, we're just going to type in 20 because that feels like the right size. Uh, border for this specific uh, badge, retro badge logo type that we're going to make here. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of tweaking here uh, just to make sure that these line up with the edges of these grids here. And again, keeping three, uh, three of those boxes on either side. Pick some colors that were going to be a good starting place. We'll add a second rectangle here, and this is what's going to be the background. And we're going to change it later, but right now we're going to set this up to be our background. So uh, let's line this up again, keeping one box all around. This is a, a way to use the grid well, is to uh, line up your shapes with the edge of these little grid boxes here. So we're going to keep a box around there, and then we're going to keep that space down there at the bottom because that's what's going to be our text. So let's pick a, a retro color. We're gonna go with this retro orange right here. And then we're going to start placing our retro sunset in here. And some of these have white lines in the middle. Some of them don't. For this design, we don't want any white lines separating them, um, but we don't want a more radial gradient. We just want a, a simpler uh, pattern. So I'm gonna choose this one right here that has five. So when I click that, boom, it goes in like that. And then I'm going to line this up uh, to match the top and bottom of this box here so that it lines up correctly. What we're going to do is change the colors of our sunset here. So we're going to have them all, instead of be uh, different colors on the spectrum, we're going to start with a darker red and work our way up the spectrum here. So we're going to go from darker red to kind of like a muddy orange. Uh, and we're going to go through this until we find some colors that feel good. And again, you can click this design down in the descriptions to start using it yourself if you want to grab colors from the specific project or even edit the project and use it yourself. And what we're going to do is a kind of a cool little trick here. And we're going to duplicate the rectangle that we made uh, there. I'm going to make it smaller and then we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to go down starting with the opposite color of the sunset. So I've selected this top rectangle. I'm going to click the object color and then I can select the darkest color and then we're going to go reverse. So let me duplicate this. I'll put this down again. The grids are helpful in keeping these accurately placed. And then what I can do is just use the eyedropper tool to make this quick. I'll grab that second color like that and then I'm going to go through this process three more times. Now this middle one I'm going to select the color but then make it a little bit different because I don't want it to completely seep into the background so I'm going to make it a little bit lighter just to make the sunset stand out a little bit more. 
Hey, real quick, if you're getting value out of this retro logo tutorial, let me know by hitting the thumbs up button and the red subscribe button. Then let me know in the comments, are you working on a retro logo right now? And if so, what style are you using? Are you going like this style, which is the more adventure style we've been using in this video, or are you going more of a West Coast surf, a retro sunset style? Either way, let me know, because I want to know down in the comments. So now that we have that complete, what we can do is, is go over here and create a place for our text so we're going to grab another box and put this across here like this it doesn't have to be super accurate because again this is where your text is going to be so let's just place this against these two borders here center it to make sure that that is good to go again leaving a, a box worth of space around our sunset and then what we can do is change any colors that we want to change I think this middle color maybe is a little bit too light it could be a little bit darker uh, just to match the tone and so we're gonna go with something like this that helps the sunset actually stand out a little bit more so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in a climber because our logo is based around adventure I like this one right here again it's got the sharp corner so it's gonna line up really well so I'm gonna click the same color black which is a little bit off black I'm gonna select the top box and our illustration and then I can hit the left align and the top align tool and then boom it's perfectly aligned which is what exactly what we want so that's really nice so now we're gonna type in mountains and I'm gonna select a couple of these so we're gonna select several different mountains and then make them the same color we don't want all of these shadows in here specifically we just want it to be one color the background color so the bottom color there and so I'm going to select these colors twice so that the mountainscape is just one solid color and then I'm gonna start maneuvering these around to best fit the layout and then what I'll do is add more mountains and make them the color of the background that whitish off-white color so that it kind of stands out a little bit better and the mountainscape is correct now that I feel that that's right I'm going to select a flag here I like this one right here that's straight up and down it's gonna work for our layout here and then we're gonna make that the same color as that off-white so that it blends in with the top of this mountain we'll make it a lot smaller and we're gonna put it at the top of this mountain over here kind of blends in with the rest of the ensemble here and then we're gonna start adding our text for our logo type so we're going to type in cashmere uh, like this and we're going to change the color of course to that off whitish color so that it blends correctly with the bottom block here make this a little bit bigger and then when you're looking at old retro type a lot of times it'll be a sans serif type that's pretty heavy so we can click the sans serif selection over here and go through and try a couple of different versions uh, try, try a couple of different fonts that we want to see if they'll work or not for this specific layout we are going to use this syncopate font right here so it's pretty cool it's got some interesting shapes going on kind of all the same height but they're lowercase mixed with uppercase but we're gonna make it all uppercase because I really like how this looks with this uh, sans serif layout again with this retro design so this is looking good uh, we're gonna decrease our letter spacing here to be a lot smaller a lot shorter because we're gonna put the word tours here to the right of it now a little trick if we hit the justify key we can sort of ignore the uh, letter spacing here because when I when I expand this it's going to increase the letter spacing and then when I uh, make it smaller it'll decrease it but if you go too far or too small it'll jump into the next line and so if you're going smaller you may need to uh, in increase it or decrease it based on how big your te your bounding box is so then what we'll do is we'll duplicate this text you can hold the alt or option key or you can hit command C and command V and then we're gonna type the word tours um, and it's not going to work the way it is right now all big and, and huge like that we're gonna actually pick a different font we're gonna pick the Oswald font again we're gonna keep it all caps and this is a nice uh, condensed font that's the same height it's, it's pretty tall um, but I can make it really small like this to fit the layout so then we just need to do some minor tweaking uh, to make sure that these 
two lines of text are in line with each other they're the same height all right once you're feeling pretty good about that then we can play with the variable setting here we can make it a little bit thinner uh, to fit just a little bit uh, contrast a little bit more with the main cashmere text and then we can start playing with our background color so I'm gonna pick this contrasting blue color that plays really well with these oranges and yellows I think that looks really nice like this and then we're going to add some texture so we have tons of textures that you can go through and pick the best one. I think some grain textures would be nice and fitting for this specific outdoorsy logo. And you can click through a couple of them. You can click through another one and it'll replace it, which is nice. It's already set to color burn, but you can change that to multiply or something else that you see fit. You can also adjust the opacity. I think we're gonna go with this one, but I want it to be behind our logo. So you see it's on top. So I'm gonna go to the layers here, uh, then I'll click release texture up here, and then now this texture has been released. I can move it around where I want to, and so if I start dragging it down, it's gonna start going behind our logo. So now I just need to drag this. I'll scroll all the way to the bottom. I'll put it just above the background, and so now it's not affecting our logo. But then a little bit of a trick here is we can select a second grain texture, one that's a little bit more smaller, a little bit more specific to grain. It's not so, it's not so blotchy. Then we can lower the opacity or raise the opacity depending on what you want, and that looks really nice as an outdoorsy adventure style retro logo. So now you're ready to go make your own retro logo designs easily using Kittle. And again, if you haven't done so yet, you can sign up to use Kittle for free using the link in the description. And you can even use the template that we made in this video and start editing it and customize it to your liking. And by the way, we would love to see what you're working on. So don't forget to tag us on social media at Kittle Design. And you can find those links down in the description as well. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already we greatly appreciate it and that's a way for you to know when we upload more videos we're uploading new videos each week and i really don't want you to miss out on anything thanks so much for watching and for using kittle until next time create magic <laughs>